job opportunities for those without prior work experience could be getting hard to come by. Our online job portal, Indeed, says that openings for fresh graduates who aren't in tech, management or sales have declined by over a third in September. That's compared to the same month last year. Other numbers come after official figures for the second quarter showed that the unemployment rate for those younger than 30 was higher than the national average. More, we're joined by Richard Bradshaw. He's CEO of Asia and Europe at Ethos Beath Chapman, a global group of executive recruitment experts. Uh, uh, Mr. Bradshaw, uh, youth unemployment, uh, mm. higher than average unemployment rates. Is that something to worry about? Well, look... Um Typically, uh, youth unemployment rates are always higher than the adult uh, counterparts. Um, so I don't think it's anything particularly out of the ordinary that um, <clears throat> this can always be compounded uh, in tighter labour markets. Um, you know, obviously speaking, employers and hiring managers in times of uncertainty might err on the side of experience over inexperience. So I don't think this is anything unusual. I don't think it's necessarily... Um, you, you know, the meaning that we can extract from it is nothing uh, panic worthy, I don't think. Um, and we can't forget that Singapore is just on the back of a, a 24 year low of uh, youth unemployment as of uh, 2022. Um, yeah. Well, it seems like we really are in an employer's market right now. Uh, before we get into that, uh, Richard, we're going to talk more about it. Let's first take a look at how the employment situation Look what it looks like from the lens of one of our young workers. My name is Annie and uh, I'm currently 22 this year. I graduated from a diploma with early childhood two years ago. I decided to venture into special education. Yeah. I sent my resume on this um, website called My Career's Future. However, only about like one of the company replied to me after about one month. So uh, within this time frame, I basically have like no job to do. Currently, I'm working as a part-time event crew. I think having like short courses like to help people who are passionate in the special needs industry will definitely help. And uh, other than that, it would be great if the employers can also keep their website up to date. So... Richard Annie's experience, not a great one. She only heard back from one employer despite, you know, sort of reaching out there and, and, and casting her net, mm. doing her homework, but uh, she couldn't land the job that she wanted to. Is it a sign, uh, perhaps, that there is a mismatch going on between what graduates are learning versus what, what the market really wants? Yeah, so, you, you know, it, it, it's very sad to see the plight of, of any individual uh, job, speak, uh, job seeker, especially um, at a, that youth age category, uh, which youth is 15 to 24 in this, in this instance. Um, very sad to see. I, I, I don't think we should lose sight of the fact, though, the strong position Singapore is in, the, the track record Singapore has for recovery. For example, the youth unemployment jumped up to, I think, you know, 11 percent back in 2020 down to 6% in 2022. Um, very sad to see uh, people like Annie in that sort of situation, of course. I think at a macro type of level, if you look at the grad courses that Singaporeans are doing, this is technology, it's engineering, it's infocoms, health, medicine. If you then look at the, the, uh, the shortage occupation list, for example, which has been a, a hot topic, a very topical uh, subject for Singapore this last sort of 12 months in particular, and Singapore's fastest growing industries, these are the same. Yeah. It's health, it's medicine, it's manufacturing, it's engineering. And so absolutely, it's very sad to obviously see any individual plights, but I think at a macro level and generally speaking, I think Singapore can be pretty content with how it's aligning its graduates, its graduate courses with where the market of Singapore is going. All right. All right. Uh Annie, uh, she said eventually she took a job, her current job is as a part-time event crew. I take it the salary from that uh, is probably far below what she might have expected to get given uh, what she was studying in school, her, her educational experience. Uh, would you recommend uh, taking lower pay for the moment uh, in the hope that that might lead to something better or does that trap you forever 
unable to rise to the value that you think your education should have given you? <clears throat> I think when the subject of lower pay arises, it's the perennial angle or question, you know, does this pigeonhole me, does this trap me, does this um, put me on a lower trajectory uh, longer term in, 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 in my career? I, I think a few bits and pieces to share here to sort of add some, add some context. Um, you know, first, you know, I'd be amiss to try and be overly prophetic here and say that the market's going to turn on an exact date. I think the common consensus is that sort of three, six, nine months away, we are going to see maybe not a complete shift from an employer's market to employee's market, but I think there is a turning point coming in the short term rather than the, rather than the long term. Um, I think in people like Annie's cases, and there are quite a few of them at the moment, um, she really needs to focus, and, and anyone in this sort of situation needs to focus on what value they can extract, whether it's an internship, whether it's a lower paying job. Um, you know, what is the other currency that they can derive uh, from a part-time job or another position in the meantime? I think employers often look at how people have constructively used their time if it's not their ideal job of choice or they're not moving, I suppose, up their rungs on the ladder that they particularly, particularly want to. And so, look, I think if Annie in, in that position or anyone in that sort of position, uh, whether it's a part-time events position, it's the value you can extract. And if you are advancing yourself and you're using that time constructively, I think that's the best thing. Someone All right. A uh, story from our next profile is someone who has done exactly that. Uh, she is a fresh grad who had trouble finding a job uh, despite ending school three months early. But she's adding value. Let's take a listen to her story. Hey guys, uh, so today I'll be doing a day in the life of a freelance content creator, so follow me. My name is Faira and I'm a recent NUS uh, business graduate and my specialization was in marketing. Right now I'm just a freelance uh, unemployed content creator. I actually started looking for a job uh, starting of this year in January itself. It was actually quite difficult. They always needed someone with a lot more experience, although they said fresh grads. Even though it, uh, it was demoralizing, I realized that, you know what, I actually have to brush up on my skills. That's so why I have to really try out my social media strategy, uh, my content creation skills. This is so sick! Sick and twisted! It still is a lonely journey, by the way, but um, I think what governments and schools can do is just really help us. It, it's more of like the emotional support and connection. All right, uh, we heard from Fahira there, Ms. Bradshaw. Mm -hmm. uh, she says she could have done with some help. Our disappointments in life, mm -hmm. they are there all the way, certainly it's not going to end even if she gets the job of her dreams. Uh, but given, uh, say, get a realistic take on this, what kind of support really should young people be getting at this stage in their lives? Yeah, again, you know, very, very tough situation. And, um, you know, Singapore being so passionate about uh, employment, gainful employment, um, you know, technical advancements, training its, 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 its people to be ahead of the, the curve and, and sort of highly skilled. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously uh, frustrating to see someone in for here is a uh, position there. Um, look, there's, you know, there's a variety of, of, of things going on. I, you know, to pinpoint the ones I think are probably most dear to me and what I see, and I think some of the most uh, important ones. Um, first and foremost is that sort of that community feel. Um, it can feel taboo. People in that situation, they feel like the outlier. They feel like they're not wanted, not valuable. I would sort of go back to a few of the points I made earlier there in that sort of situation. Is there something that you can do constructively with that time? If you're not sort of hitting the notes that you want to, how can you fill up your time? Um, but yeah, creating that community, trying as best as we can to kind of make it less taboo and be more realistic about the macro level events and the prevailing market uh, around us. Um, but I think ultimately it's about, you know, trying to pinpoint why we haven't got this job. The market does move uh, quickly. Uh, labour forces are moving quite quickly at the moment. And again, if there is time out, if we're not landing that job of our dreams, if we're not landing that job of our choice, again, how can we advance ourselves? Mm -hmm. How can we ask ourselves the key exam questions of do we have the right skill set? Can we upskill mm -hmm. uh, and sort of take things from there? I mean, what you say is so true, Richard, because, I mean, community is, is important. But for lots of these fresh grads, they may have even moved away from their sort of core mm -hmm. group as they've dispersed. So some of them might have different experiences. Some of their friends perhaps might be luckier yeah. and so on. Uh, it's important, I think, as well for them to have access to those resources. Mm. How available, once they've left the sort of formal education system mm. and they're out there, how ex accessible is that to them? Well, well I think 
you know, again, if we look at the last few years of track record, I think they've, you know, just, just sort of hailing back a few years ago, the, the Singapore grant system uh, for, you know, government funded skills programs, uh, trainings, uh, there's a number of sort of certificates and sort of gain, gainful training you can get via Singapore mm -hmm. government. So I think it's come a long way in the last few years. Um, so I think it's in reasonably close touch. But again, you know, for that youth category, I think especially... Um, you know, 15 to 24 year olds, especially people around that sort of teenage or just going into their early 20s, it is their first foray into the world of work. They're just coming off a sort of year, year and a half period where the job market was going crazy and everybody was getting multiple offers and could get the job of their dreams. And so I think that sort of put things in a little bit of a, an unfair perspective and contrast as well. So, you know, it's not a complete blueprint, but I think that creating and fostering that sense of community, reminding them that they're not on their own, uh, reminding them that the skills, uh, advancements, courses, the training is on hand. Um, and I do feel it's closer than ever for those types of people. And also uh, a big one for me is that, you know, the market doesn't tend to be bad for too long. I know that is not the words that everybody wants to hear. But again, general consensus is that it will be more of an employee-led market at some time, we feel, sort of early, mid, mid next year. Yeah, don't give up hope. <laughs> don't give up hope, absolutely. <laughs> That's right. And thanks for joining us this evening. Richard Bradshaw, CEO of Asia and Europe at Ethos Beef Chat. Thanks for having me. Thank you.